So as nicely depicted by Rembrandt when he painted himself in self-portrait throughout his life, aging is accompanied by changes in outward morphology, but it's also associated with decline in physiological function and many diseases. If we take the brain as an example, high cognitive function, such as memory or speed of processing, dramatically decrease with age, and this is accompanied by an increase in neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's and also stroke. So really, this raises a fundamental question of whether aging is just a one-way stream towards decline, disease, and death, or whether aging can be slowed or even reversed in some instances. And in the past 20 years, the aging field has truly emerged, and it is now pretty clear that aging can be slowed and in some instances reversed by mutation in specific genes or changes in environmental factors. A nice illustration of changes in specific genes come from the studies of people with exceptional longevity. Centenarians like Jeanne Calment, who lived 122, and Walter Bruning, who lived 114. Those centenarians have genes called longevity genes that really help protect them from a wide range of age-related diseases. Now, as for the environment, Aging can be delayed, in fact, by dietary restriction, exercise, uh, uh, products and compounds from plants, such as uh, metformin, resveratrol from grapes, and even some products from uh, the soil in Easter Islands. So um, what we want to do at Stanford is really take advantage and harness this knowledge about aging and longevity to help maintain and even enhance cognitive function and preserve brain cells, neurons, of course, but also a population of regenerative cells in the brain, the neural stem cells. Because indeed, the adult brain has this population of cells called neural stem cells that can renew themselves throughout life and that can produce all the cell type in the brains, including neurons, which are very important for learning and memory. So a key question that we ask is what is the role of longevity genes in those neural stem cells? And what we found is that genes that are found in the centenarian, one of them is called FOXO, can act to preserve the pool of neural stem cells and help maintain them throughout life, their self-renewing property, as well as help them make new neurons, again, throughout life and preserve this ability. So this really illustrates how longevity genes can be harnessed to tap into the regenerative potential of the brain. Now, this is an example of how longevity genes can act. What about environmental factors like dietary restriction or exercise? Well, what we found is that dietary restriction, uh, environment stimuli do not act directly on the genes themselves. They act, in fact, on what packages the gene. It's called chromatin, and it's a way to make genes more or less accessible. And what we found is that environmental stimuli modulate this chromatin, this package, to make genes more or less accessible and mediate long-term changes in stem cells, in the organism, and even possibly in the next generations of descendants. So that's what we have shown so far. What's the future? Well, at Stanford, we are very interested in uh, taking advantage of the revolution that's taking place in technology to probe in a high throughput, ultra high throughput manner, genes, chromatin, proteins, and even metabolites, and to apply this, to leverage this to human health. In parallel, we are very excited to pioneer new model system, experimental model system that lives short such as this African killifish, which is a vertebrate like us, but lives very short so that we can test very rapidly all those genes and compounds that we can identify. And with leveraging all the discoveries on aging, longevity, stem cells, new technologies, and new model system, 
we are really hoping at Stanford to transform our understanding about cognitive health, neural health, and also about neurodegenerative diseases. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Anne.